And we are live. On this episode of TNT Live, I am answering your questions about my prepper pantry, building out a three month emergency food supply. But before we get into that, if we're just meeting, I'm Denise Jordan and I teach traditional homemaking for today's homemaker. So if you want to learn more about making and keeping a home, hit that subscribe button and double tap that little bell icon so you don't miss any upcoming videos. Okay, let's jump into it. I started a series called My Prepper Pantry, building out a three month food supply a few weeks ago and I have been getting lots and lots of interest and lots of questions as well. So I thought since this was National Preparedness Month, I thought I would round out the series by answering a few questions that I've been getting. Typically, I'll just type the answers out and then leave it at that. But so many people had similar questions. I thought it might be good if I would share them with you. So let's go ahead and get into that. And just real quick, I will greet just a few people. So hey, so hey, Tommy Bites TV. Good morning. It is good to see you as well. It is always so nice when people jump on. And also, I see there are quite a few of you out there. If you give me a thumbs up, that would just help me out quite a bit. So EJK Styles is on. Janae Whitney is on. So many people are jumping on. So I'm going to go ahead and start answering the questions because I do have a limited time today. And then we will go from there. But I've got people jumping on from all over the place. So let me know in the chat box, where are you from? I see there's Jackie from Louisiana. So who else is in the house? I am here in Indiana. So let me know where the rest of you are coming from while I get set about to answering the first question. And the first question that I, well, the first thing that I want to remind you all, first of all, is that prepping is a marathon. It is not a sprint. And it is intentional, it is strategic, and there is a reason why you're doing whatever it is you're doing. And as homemakers, it is our responsibility to make sure that we have the food supply and that we need to keep our family safe, our food insurance, so to speak. So I see people jumping on from South Carolina, New Jersey, North Carolina, sunny California. We're overcast today. Texas. So good. It's good to have so many of you from all around the country. So the first question that I have is from Betsy K. And Betsy asked, she said she's just learning about properly storing beans and rice and flour. So can she store them in the containers without Mylar bags? And the answer to that question is yes, you can store them in containers without Mylar bags. It depends upon what kind of containers you're storing them in. So if you're looking at storing them in a food grade container, such as this, and this is one that I got from Kroger. It had frosting in it, or shall I say icing. This one had German chocolate icing. And it's a food grade container. I got this at the Kroger Deli for free. And you can store items in a food grade container such as that without a Mylar bag. And from what I understand, the Mylar bags were a little bit in short supply at one point. They're starting to be available again online. But from what I understand, they were in short supply, so people didn't have that option. However, if you do choose to store them in a food grade container such as this without a Mylar bag, make sure you are also putting in some bay leaves. And I've got some bay leaves here. Sorry about that big eye, but I've got some bay leaves here and you can store things in a food grade container and put in bay leaves to help cut down on the possibility of critters. But also you can go with some oxygen absorbers in a container such as that as well. However, if you are going to go with a container such as that, you don't have any Mylar bags, make sure you are freezing your um, beans and your rice and that kind of thing before you put them in there. So that question was from Betsy K. And then Elisa from New York says she loves my channel. Oh, how sweet. I appreciate that. Um, she's in the Bronx. 
And Lord G is saying that I rock. Well, thank you. I appreciate that as well. Okay. So the next question, well, again, had to do with my other bags. And this one is from Master K9 Trainer. And they wanted to know why I'm skipping my other bags and oxygen absorbers. Well, I am just starting on this prepper journey. I've only been building my prepper pantry about six to eight weeks. So when I first got started, I didn't know about my other bags, but the more I've learned, I'm going to order some today and then start using some of those. So because from what I've learned is that if you have my other bags, if you have a bucket such as this one, and I got this one at Lowe's, and it is not food grade, but it does have a nice little lid. So it's a food, it's a large container, five gallon bucket, very similar to my food grade containers that I got at Tractor Supply, but it's not food grade. So if you use Mylar bags to store in containers such as that, then you don't have to have your Mylar bags. I'm sorry about that. If you have a container such as this and you have Mylar bags, you can store items in those containers that are not food grade because you've got their Mylar bag in them and you've got the food in that and then you can get your lid on and that kind of thing. So, so that's why, and again, that question was from Master K9 Trainer. Okay, so GK Fasan is on with us as well today, and she's glad she's able to catch us live because in this way, she can ask the questions that she has. So I got a question from Lynn B, and Lynn wanted to know, are the bugs visible? Now, when she says bugs, what she's talking about are the weevils, the flower weevils or other little critters that get into rice, flour, sugar, staples, you know, dry staple goods, that kind of thing. <coughs> Excuse me. And the question is yes and no. The bugs are visible once they hatch and they're large enough to move around and you can see them. So yes, they're visible from that perspective. And my friend Cal said she's also seen them in boxes of cake mix. However, in almost all of those food supplies, let's say you got a big bag of rice like this. There's gonna be eggs in those there's going to be eggs in those bags and those you won't see because typically the eggs are little white little tiny dots and so you don't see the eggs in those you don't see the larva in those until they hatch and then get active so that's why with those kind of uh, foods we will take the rice we will put it in the freezer leave it in the freezer for several days take it out let it come to room temperature you can freeze it again after several more days now why do we freeze it twice well you freeze it the first time to kill off any larva that might have hatched and might be in there and then when you take it out of the freezer set it out on your counter let it come to room temperature and then if there's any eggs that are in there that might hatch during the thawing out or returning to room temperature period when you put them back in the freezer it would kill off anything like that. So that's what you need to do. So that's why you would put it in the freezer, take it out and put it back in. And then you can use these containers and also put some bay leaves in there as well. So that was Lynn B. So as I said, the larva and the eggs, you really don't see, but once they hatch and start getting active, those you do, you don't want it to get to that point. I'll tell you what, I got a weevil infestation in my pantry once and oh my goodness, it was terrible. I had to throw away everything in a box that was in there. So spaghetti, uh, pancake mix, flour, anything that was in a container in a box, I had to throw it out. And keep in mind that it's not that you're a dirty housekeeper. Those weevils, those eggs, those larvae are in the food when you bring it home. They also sometimes will get into, into like the little edges on the corrugated boxes. They are attracted to the glue in the boxes, that kind of thing. So 
So here's my first question that I'm going to take, and it's from Emily. And Emily says she has a three month working pantry, but a loved one has a basement of poorly stored food. How would you suggest that I encourage them to plan properly and ditch the 10 year old expired stuff? Hmm. Well, that is a delicate question. And I think what you just might want to do is just share what you've learned about properly storing food. Talk about food that has been expired for 10 years. And if it's in a can or something like that, it might still be OK. But if it's in a box or something like that, it's probably not. So I would just kind of encourage them to pitch it. Someone was asking, what are weevils? And weevils are just like little insects, little bugs um, that get into dried goods, flour, um, grits, cornmeal, um, rice, beans, those kinds of things. So that's what, what those are. So that's what weevils are. They're very pesky. Somebody said weevils are the devil's minion. And um, Carmen is asking, can I freeze mozzarella cheese? My neighbor gifted her with a five pound container of that. Yes, you can freeze mozzarella cheese. I just learned recently that you can freeze cheese. And it's best if you freeze it in small portions and shred it up, that kind of thing, if you need to prior to freezing, because it won't shred very well once it comes out of the freezer. And from what I understand, you can use it and it'll be fine. So, yes, you can freeze your mozzarella. But if it's a chunk of mozzarella, you want to shred that up and put it in like smaller containers first. But yeah, it's, it frees beautifully. OK, so now uh, one of the videos that I did in this series was about meat and proteins. And I'm not a vegetarian. So one of the things that I did ask my viewers were what were some meatless options that you might want to share with others because I only knew about a few. I have a son who is semi vegetarian and he likes to buy Morningstar um, items and that kind of thing. So I am um, trying to turn off my phone here and hope my house phone doesn't ring. Um, so I keep those on hand to help him. When he's here, he can drop in and I could give him that to eat. But I didn't have a lot of other options. So Gypsy B suggested. OK, hang on a second. We've got a family member that's very ill. Sorry. Let me just answer. Hey, I'm going to have to call you back. I'm in the middle of something, but give me about 40 minutes. OK. OK. All right. I'll call you later. Bye. Sorry, I do have a landline as well as a cell phone. And so my family, if they can't get me on my cell phone, they'll call the house phone. And I like the phone will be blowing up if I don't answer it. So sorry about that. All right. So now I was answering the question about meatless options. So or rather I was given a comment about meatless options. And Gypsy B says there's some there's a brand called Gardein Meatless Crumbles, and she said they are wonderful. You can use them in all kinds of dishes. You can hardly tell the difference and that they're very nice to use. She also suggested tofu. I forgot about tofu. I used to buy tofu and I would use it particularly when I was trying to do a meatless Monday. Well, my hubby was like, look, I don't believe in meatless Monday. I want to see some kind of meat on the plate. So I kind of quit using it for a while. But I'm thinking about going back to that. So tofu is another good option. T-O-F-U, T-O-F-U, tofu. And the thing about tofu, it really doesn't have any flavor of its own. But when you cook it, it takes on the flavors of the food you're cooking it with. So you add some onions and peppers and different things like that. It's amazing. You can get tofu squares, tofu crumbles, and you can make all kinds of dishes with that. Gypsy also suggested black eyed peas in rice. And I will have to say, I've been to the store twice looking for black eyed peas and I've not been able to find any. There appears to be a shortage of black eyed peas. So there's that. And he also mentioned a kale dairy free cheese. C-H-A-O, kale dairy free cheese. I am not familiar with that brand, but let me just see if I can just search real quick and see if something pops up. 
instead of Kai, I want Ko. Dairy. And we'll see what happens. Oh, what well, appears I am in Instagram, which is not where I want it to be. All right, so let me get to Google. And let's just look up that real quick. And we'll see. Okay, I, I just started typing in KO and dairy and it um, popped right up. So there is a field roasted official site. It's an artisanal plant-based cheese. So yeah, you can find that. So that kale dairy free cheese is another option. Someone else just popped up and I missed the name that said, yes, there appears to be a shortage of black eyed peas. And here's the other thing. There may be a shortage of like regular green peas coming up. From what I understand, a lot of these vegetable proteins that people are using are pea based. So uh, like PEA are pea based. So. I would suggest if you're able to find green peas and black eyed peas and lentils and beans and those kind of things in your area, I suggest you pick some up. Okay, so thank you, Gypsy B, for those great options. All right. So now Mary Dreer says she's not finding the 15 bean soup. Now, Mary, let me just show you this. I got that. This is 15 bean soup. This is not the best container to store it in, but this is going to be short term storage for me. I'll be using it within the next two to three months. So that's why I've got it in this. And one of my viewers did ask about this container. So that's why I set it out here. They wanted to know where I got this from. And I got this container at Walmart. This is not the OXO brand. This one is but let me just tell you about these though these are relatively for short-term storage because they're not as airtight as they should be and the reason why i know that is because i keep my uh, dishwasher pods in one of these and it's a pretty similar brand and i can feel that they're just a teensy wincy bit drier than what they were when i first put them in there now they've been in there for a while because you know you only use one pot a day but it's been about oh i'd say about three months so i can definitely tell the difference so emily davis says that online grocery shopping like thrive market and amazon fresh helped her to find the staples she needed to restock her pantry fresh even had lysol wipes which has been out you know for a while and so G Gigi Fasan says that she just checked Amazon and it appears they do have the black eyed peas in great canisters. OK, so I'm going to check that out today. I've got to it'll have to be later this afternoon because like my cousin that just called, we have a cousin that's very ill and we're going to be going to see her like after I'm done with the show. So she was just calling to check in for that. But I'm going to look for some black eyed peas when I'm out. And let's see. So Mary, I find my 15 bean soup at Kroger. I was at Walmart, didn't see it, but I do find it at Kroger. So you just have to check every time you go. There were a few weeks when I didn't find it. This particular container is like three bags worth. And then I went another day and I found two other bags. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. So there's that. Um, Cray Cray. Cray Cray said jackfruit is a great alternative that mimics beef really well. And I have to tell you, I just learned about jackfruit. So Cray Cray, thank you for sharing that option. I don't have any. I could not find any because when I did my meat and protein haul, and if you missed that grocery haul, I'll link it above with an iCart and in the description box below. But I tried to find jackfruit. There were a couple places I tried even online and they were sold out. And my local Kroger and Walmart didn't seem to have any. So jackfruit, though, was supposed to be a great alternative that it kind of cooks up like shredded chicken or something like that. So I encourage you, if you're a plant-based, um, if you follow a plant-based diet, check it out. But you're going to have to probably have to find it online. 
Okay, so this question is from Love and Life, and she says that she bought several bags of dried beans prior to the COVID shutdown. And she didn't know at the time that jars were the best option to store it in and wanted to know if it's too late to freeze them now. And I'm like, no. Or rather, she wanted to know if it's too late to get them into jars now. And no, it is not too late. Now, I would recommend that you take those beans, put them in your freezer, let them sit in your freezer for three or four days, take them out, put them on the counter, let them come back to room temperature, put them back in the freezer for three or four days, let them come back to room temperature, and then put them in a jar. Put them in a um, jar such as this. And I will say, this is a repurposed jar. If you take a look at this here, this was a jar of Classico spaghetti sauce, which is the spaghetti sauce that I like. But also, I like the way the jars are. I mean, these are like canning jars, so you can use them to can with if you have to. But they're certainly good storage options. So I many times will get this kind of spaghetti sauce so that I can save the jars because I like the jars to be a little bit uniform. So, so there is that. And I'll just show you something else too. This is some um, chopped hazelnuts that I put in this jar. This was a Smucker's um, ice cream topping. And since jars are, since glass jars are at a premium right now, it is very difficult to get canning jars. Then repurpose the jars you have at home. Now, if you want to see someone that has taken that to the next level, you have to check out my sister Darcy at Organized by Darcy. First of all, her pantry looks like, I don't know, it is just so organized and so beautiful. But she has these jars and I thought, where did she get those? And I asked her, I said, where did you get those jars? I was going to go look for some. And she said she, they were repurposed. She buys the same kind of something and I can't remember now what it was. And she saves the jars. She's been saving them for years. And her whole pantry is just so neatly organized with jars that she's been repurposing. So there's that. So April Antonella, oh, hi, April. Oh, there's, there's my little protege. So she says she likes to repurpose her jars for other products. So yes, that's very good. Carmen Carmenati says she's noticed that supermarkets are not sending out flyers with their sales, not as often anyway. You know what, I, I have to think you might be right. and. One of the other things that I have learned is that they're not getting in the supplies that they normally get. When you go to the grocery store, one of the things I want you to do is to look at the shelves and see what's there and see what's not there. So let's say you're starting to see shelves that are empty. Maybe there's a few sections in the shelves that are empty. What you might want to do is, um, just begin to think about, well, what was on that shelf? And then if it was something that you would normally use, as you come across it, I would start picking those things up. Um, so let's see, RT says, if a jar says mason on it, it is a canning jar. And yes, if a jar says mason on it, it is a canning jar. And this is a mason jar, so you can use it for canning. And it, the, um, And these lids with the ring and all that, mm, smells good. These lids will fit. I just have not used those jars myself for canning, but I just might since canning jars are at a premium right now. So one of the things that I've learned though, as I said, is that many of the, the grocery stores are not getting in the supplies that they're requesting. So they haven't sent out as many flyers and you cannot call the store and ask if they have something now. When you call and to try to do that, you'll get a message that says, and we're sorry, we can't tell you whether or not this or that or the other is in stock because they were getting way too many calls for things like that. You can ask the manager when you're in the store, is there a truck coming in and just kind of keep checking back, that kind of thing. So Sue Weldon asks, are you supposed to put pasta in the freezer for a couple of days after purchasing it? Or can I put them right in my OXO containers? Well, here's the thing, Sue. Most of the time, 
before I even considered prepping one, I would bring food in. I would bring my pasta in and I would leave it in the box that it came in. So my spaghetti was in the box that it came in. But sometimes it might take me three or four months before I used up three or four boxes of spaghetti. My noodles, I would just leave them in the bag. Well, now that I'm thinking more about long-term storage, either mid to long-term storage, because I'm trying to build out a three-month food supply, eventually hoping to work to six months. But right now, three to four months is my goal, keeping in mind that I have two disabled sisters as well that I try to prepare for also. So now as I bring in those pasta and different things like that, if I'm thinking about long-term storage, I will put it in the freezer and then move it to another container. I do have some plastic containers, kind of like Tupperware, and I almost brought one out, but I didn't think I would need that. I didn't think anticipate that question, so I didn't bring it out here, and I don't want to leave the screen. But I have three bags of the Amish Essen House noodles, which I love to use for chicken and noodles. I put those puppies in the freezer, and then once I took them out of the freezer, then I dumped them in that plastic container, and then I put in some bay leaves, which if you just jumped on, I put in a couple bay leaves with them because they don't like the scent of the bay leaves and that kind of helps to deter them. So there's that. So I vet wants to know, can I put my flour in jars or can I just put the bags in five gallon buckets with gamma lids? I don't have a food saver or the suction lids. <laughs> Excuse me for being indelicate. The pollen count's starting to go up and my nose and throat's getting a little itchy. So if I give an indelicate snort, please forgive me. I try not to do that, but I can just feel the back of my throat itching right now. So now let me go back to the question by Yvette Gonzalez. Can I put my flour in jars or can I put the bags in five gallon buckets? Now, here's the thing. Oh, she said in five gallon buckets with gamma lids. You can put the flour in five gallon buckets with gamma lids, but not in the original bag. Here's the thing. With those original bags, sometimes you can get, uh, so there could be um, critters that are in the, the seams of the bags and different things like that. And once you put the flour in the container, you put in uh, maybe some bay leaves or put in an oxygen, oxygen absorber or something like that, and then a gamma seal, that should take care of anything that is in there. But in my short experience with prepping, I've not seen anything that recommended storing the flour in the bag. They recommend if you're going to put it in a container in a bag to consider something like this, like this is flour. I had a 10 pound bag of flour and I have a recipe for bread that I learned from my friend Mary at Mary's Nest and I'm going to be linking her channel below because she is the pantry queen. Um, uh, really in regards to the foods and different things like that, nutrient dense foods that you should store in there. But the recipe that she shared with me takes six cups of flour. So I put six cups of flour in a little brown lunch bag. And then I put that brown lunch bag into my, uh, into this bag and sealed it with my food saver. Well, mine is a Nesco food saver, but sealed it that way. And then I will put this in the container, a food storage bucket, or in a regular bucket with a gamma lid or a regular lid. Once it's in here like this, I can either use, I can use this bucket, which is not food grade, put in some uh, bay leaves and put it in like that if I choose to, if it's all I have. But I do have some food storage buckets with a, two gamma seals, I only have two. And I will put these in that. So there's that. Okay, I missed another question. 
I did not see Mary's video yesterday, but I will. Now, Janie says that Mary said when doing anything that you've put in the freezer, don't store it with a moisture pack until you're positive it's completely dry or becomes dangerous. So yes, that makes perfect sense. If you like, let's say you have a bag of rice like this, and this is a bag of rice that I had put in the freezer. Then I took it out and I laid it on my counter for about three days. Then I put it back in the freezer for, you know, another few days. And I laid it back on my counter for another three or four days. I made sure it was completely dry, had completely returned to room temperature. You don't want any moisture in it at all. So make sure that you do that. And yes, Mary at Mary's Nest is my sister from another mister. We would be best friends if we lived in the same town. Unfortunately, I'm in Indiana. She's in the Texas Hill Country. So I know she's got a new video out and I'll be checking that. Mary Dreer asked about bay leaves for pasta. Yes, you can put the bay leaves in, like I've even got bay leaves in this jar of oatmeal. Keep it in mind that once I pour it out, I'm gonna take the bay leaf out and then you know put it back in. So when you scoop it out, and this is one of my gallons of uh, storage jars, um, and I put the um, bay leaves in here to kind of, like I said, to deter critters, I'm going to see those bay leaves if I pour it out into a, a, a cup or something like that. So, yes, I put it in there and then I'm going to take the bay leaf out. So put the bay leaf in with the pasta as well, because once you scoop the pasta out, just make sure the bay leaf's not in there. Oh, Elijah said she found my channel or he found my channel on from the Daily Connoisseur. Lydia, yes, Lydia found my channel on the Daily Connoisseur. And you know, I was so surprised when Jennifer Scott mentioned me on The Daily Connoisseur. I follow her, I love her, I love the way she does things. Um, she's such a lady and I like that kind of thing. So when she mentioned that she was gonna put my video as assignment three, well me and Mary both, but preparing a pantry for winter, I was like, Oh my goodness. So I've had several people come over from Jennifer's channel and from Robin's channel at Faith and Flower. And I really, really appreciate it. And so let me just thank all of you guys right now for jumping on with me today. I really appreciate it. Okay. So let's see. Okay. We answered that one. Oh, uh, Michelle wants to know where I found this big bag of uh, bay leaves. And I got this from Amazon and I do have a link in the description box below that shows you uh, that you can click on if you want to order some for yourself. One of my friends said, if you like bay leaves so much, why don't you plant a tree? And I was like, oh, I could plant a bay leaf tree. Hadn't thought about it, but it's a laurel tree. So I might look into that next next uh, uh, spring. But we'll, we'll see. Let's see. Well, Emily wants to know, what does my, well, okay, before that, e, EJ had a question, did I freeze my oatmeal first? And no, I didn't. I had just gone ahead and I had bought a container of a carton of Quaker oats and I just dumped it in the container. But I had put the oatmeal in that jar before I started prepping per se. So I've just left it in there because I'll have it used up you know, with the next three to six months. So I'm not real worried about that. I, I did put the bay leaf in there though, just to make sure it kind of helps to deter critters. I use that oatmeal though for like cooking uh, meatloaf and cookies and things like that. We tend to eat uh, instant oatmeal that comes like the Quaker oatmeal, maple and brown sugar in the box, that kind of thing. And then um, Emily wants to know, what do my kids think about prepping? Well, my... Oldest son and my daughter, they think I'm onto something. They agree. And when we had the shutdown in March, when COVID hit, we had the shutdown in March, I could see it coming. I am a nurse by profession and I taught community health nursing and worked in the community health nursing area for about the last 10 years when I was working. So I could see the signs. I could read the signs that 
that there was going to be a food shortage. And I could tell just based upon the kind of things that I was seeing. And I thought if they declare a shutdown, we need to be prepared. So I told my family and friends to start stocking up on things. Most of them paid attention and they were okay. So I'm seeing the signs again, which I'm sure many of you are as well, just because things that I could find on the shelf before that I don't see now, I'm still seeing empty shelves and we're supposed to be stocked, but there's been a disruption in the food supply and just different things like that. So my kids are on board. Now the hubby thinks I've lost my mind. He's like, look, don't buy any more food. He's like, watch the budget. Don't buy any more food. But here's the thing. Typically I'd be at Hobby Lobby buying all kinds of fall decorations. I'd be getting ready for Thanksgiving, buying little cutesy things, little tchotchkes, you know, to sit around the house. I'm not doing that now. I'm buying food and water and toiletries and things like that. So, and I will admit there have been times when like today he's out fishing. I'll make a run to Target. I'll make a run to Kroger and whatever I'm going to buy, I'll bring it home and put it away before he gets here because he would never know. But typically he brings the groceries in for me. So when he comes, when I come home with the groceries, he comes out, brings them in. So then he sees what I'm getting. He's like, babe, slow it down. So I'm trying. So Janie wants to know, have I been able to find canning jars and lids? Yes and no. I've been able to find canning jars. And if you struggle with finding canning jars, Target has them in right now. And Walmart has some in a few days ago. So they're beginning to come back in the canning jars with the lids. You know, you have to buy the case. But what I've noticed is that what used to be 12 jars in a box, well, now there might just be nine jars in a box, that kind of thing. But there, I've not found any canning lids the last month. I have found two boxes of canning lids, oh, about a month, six weeks ago, and I picked them up. I don't know why, because I didn't need any at the time. I'm so glad now that I did. So, Bitty Boo, oh, hey, Anna, how you doing? She said she's been pre uh, preaching uh, prepping for years. And you know what? We need to do that. We really do. Uh, Mary said she started prepping in 2013. And yeah, when the shutdown came, we had everything at home we needed. We didn't have to go out. We didn't have to worry about it. And he was very glad that we were prepared. So I figure as my I'm the homemaker here, so that is my responsibility to make sure that happens. Carmen said she found canning jars at Family Dollar for a dollar each. You can find canning jars at Hobby Lobby too, but it's highway robbery there. I found canning jars there. They had, you know that they had come there in boxes, which they had opened up, put on the shelves. And like, you know, a jar like this gallon size jar or half gallon size jar was like almost $20. Now, the day that I went, they were having a 50% off sale. So I bought a couple and then the... Uh, quart jars and other jars were there and again they were on sale so I went ahead and bought them since they were 50% off but they were still more than what a box of regular canning jars would have been so let's see Oklahoma's in the house thank you for dropping in so canning and canning supplies period are in short supply I did purchase a um Ball Fresh Tech Electric Water Bath Canner. You can kind of see back there on the counter. That's what I was doing yesterday. I was canning tomatoes and it took me two months to get it. And I'll, let me tell you this, just to, to share with you a lesson that I learned. So, you know, Mary at Mary's Nest, I was watching her channel last year and she showed when she got that new canner and I'm like, oh, I'm going to get one. I put it on my list and it was $135. So I was like, whoa, I am not buying that. I'll just wait. And I forgot to put it on my wish list. So I never told the hubby or the kids that I wanted one. This year when I went to buy one, you couldn't find them. They were just like gone. And then when I was able to find one on eBay or somewhere, they were like over $200. So I did find one at a um, hardware store because many hardware stores will ca carry canning supplies for $189. By the time it got shipped here, it was $200 for that canner. I should have bought the one last year for $135 and I could have got free shipping through Amazon. So lesson learned. If you see it and you need it, jump on it. 
Trader Joe's and Whole Foods have many plant-based options for chicken and beef. Beyond Burger is very popular. So yeah, we don't have a Trader Joe's here, but we're getting one. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, EJ, uh, pr procrastination is a big, big lesson. So Dana said she found one for $20 at a yard sale, new and in the box. You know, Pyman68, you said you can use an Instapot for canning. I've not seen that science. So I can't, I've not seen that science is all I can say. So you'll have to let us know your experience with that, but I've not seen that science. So I can't recommend that. Jane said she saw on Facebook Marketplace somebody was selling six cases of canning jars for $600. Yes, just crazy. Okay, Shandy has a question about bay leaves. Go ahead and get it in there. And let's see, am I missing any others before I go to my other questions? But Family Dollar has canning jars. Dollar Tree has canning jars. But they sell them individually. So you might be able to buy 12 for a dollar each, which is still better than Hobby Lobby. Okay. Oh, De uh, Denny M says she loves how I store things under my couch. She has a tiny house and finding space for three month food supply is tough. Yes, I um, figured out that I had to do something. I had to put it somewhere because first of all, you know, I just can't have food sitting all around the house. I mean, it's just not, you know, aesthetically pleasing. And, you know, it just I just didn't want to do that. So, but when you look at the shelves at Walmart or at Kroger's, they have like these little flat cardboard, I don't know, flats that they put the canned goods in. You can take some of those home. They're free because they're just going to pitch them, you know, uh, break the boxes down and recycle them. So I put some, the canned goods on a tray. And if you've got a sofa that has a skirt on it, and even if it doesn't, if it's got feet that's high enough, you could just slide a couple of cases of uh, canned goods underneath your sofa. I wouldn't advise jarred foods because they shouldn't crack or break or anything like that. But just in case there should be any leakage or whatever, you don't want that kind of thing going on in your living room or wherever. So I wouldn't advise that. But canned goods, that kind of thing, yes, you can put it in a, on a flat and store it underneath your uh, bed, underneath your sofa if it's got a skirt. Or you can buy stackable crates. I sent the hubby to the Walmart yesterday. He came home with four stackable crates, $2 each. Now I wanted white or black. So he called and said, there's good news and bad news. I said, what's the good news? They're $2. What's the bad news? They're all blue. I said, I guess we're going to have blue stackable crates. So consider that. You can store canned goods. You can store beverages and different things like that in the stackable crates. Now, your there's other options or other items you wouldn't want to put in those things, but th that's a good beginning. Okay, um, Mrs. P said, have I looked into shopping ethnic stores for spices? I have not. The Indian Asian stores have excellent prices on spices, beans, and flour. I will do that. Thank you. Thank you, Sandra. Welcome. Rachel is in Hawaii. The prices have been so bad there. She went shopping and her bill was about $40 more than it normally is. You know, the prices are bad everywhere. They are just bad everywhere. So that, that's it. Okay, uh, yeah, prices are bad. So Dana said she has at least 100 pounds of rice per person as long as she has other foods. Mary said she's been making sauerkraut, couldn't find white mouth dollars in a hurry. It's kind of funny you say that because the quart jars and half gallon jars that I've found lately have been wide mouth, but I like those. I, I prefer that. And then Mrs. P said they're out right now, but if you like the half gallon jars, eight heart, Ace Hardware is a good place. $12 for six jars, that's pretty good. I have been going to do it best hardware. I mean, I was stalking them every other day. They were expecting a truck in. They wouldn't come in on the truck, but maybe I'll go back by there now and see if they've gotten some in because canning jars are starting to reappear. Not the lids, but the jars with the lids. Have I de been dehydrating? We have love apple chips. No, I have not. I did purchase a food dehydrator. I have to learn how to use it because I do want to dehydrate apples. Apples are in right now. We've had our apple festivals and all that kind of stuff here in Indiana. And so I want to get some. I want to do applesauce, apple jelly, uh, apple butter. I like to do that for the fall. 
And then of course, apple slices and I freeze those for apple pies in the winter. So um, dried apples would be perfect for that. So, but no, I have not started that yet. I gotta learn how to use my food dehydrator. Publix has been having some good sales, buy one, get one free. We don't have a Publix here. They have those in Georgia and my kids used to go there all the time. Sandra said she's been picking up Vienna sausages um, at Amazon and they were two sixty nine for something. They've gone up to nine twenty. Oh my God, Vienna sausages. Oh, they're horrible. I hate them. They don't like the way they smell, but the hubby likes them. So I've got some though, just a few. <laughs> Emily said she's been watching my uh, prepping journey and she's got a toddler who enjoys my, my grocery hauls and said, oh, she's been grocery shopping. I need a snack. Oh, that is so cute. All right. Let's see what else. How much rice for two adults? Let's see. Somebody wants to leave me a comment. Um... Oh, it's gone. I'm not sure what I did there. Sorry about that. I'll have to get that later. But thank you for the comment. I'll find it. Uh, okay. All right. Let me get back to the questions that I have here. All right. So Tablescape Diva said, oh, this is a, a storage option tip. She said that restaurant size pickles and peppers. So, you know, those really big gallon sized jars, you get pickles and peppers in. And then when I was a little girl, you'd go into the uh, five and dime or you go into the local grocery store, the candy shop or whatever, and they'd have these big giant jars on the counter with pickles in them. And you could buy a pickle for a nickel or for a quarter. So they've got those big jars that size at restaurants. And she says that if you go to the restaurant, the owner's in her area gives them away for free. So you might consider checking out your local restaurant wherever you're close to because they would have those big jars in and they would might be willing to share them. Uh, have I thought about making apple butter or jelly? Oh yeah, I love to make apple butter and apple jelly. Just love to. So this one is from Loving Life, and um, her question is why we shouldn't keep original packaging um, when using storage containers for noodles and beans. And I think I answered that one already. But the reason why we don't want to keep the original packaging when we're storing the beans and the rice and things like that is because sometimes like the, the bugs are attracted to the glue in the packaging. So you don't want to use the original packaging for that. So that's that. And um, Danny Mac says, keep meat Oh, she buys meat on sale and then she freezes it. And one of the things she will, she suggested that I do, because I guess she saw my video where I used my food saver to freeze some um, sausage links. I bought a package of probably Bob Evans sausage. And there were 10 leeks and I cut it in half and put five in a package. But I kept the little flat thing that it comes in. And uh, she said, take it off of that packaging she said because that packaging particularly the little like absorbent pad that comes under the meat has air in it and so she said take it off of that so i will do that um, next time and dana says with the 10 pounds of ketchup uh with the 10 pounds of ketchup um you can buy 10 pounds 10 pound cans of ketchup and then once you open it, you can re recan the remainder. Oh, OK, that's a good idea. And then Lord G says she can't find any mason jars anymore at her target, but she found some at a small mom and pop store in her neighborhood that only sell kitchen supplies. So you can check out some check out some of those prices. Send us the link and we can do that. Do I freeze my noodles like macaroni or hamburger helper meals before repackaging? Uh, yes. So um, like my noodles and stuff like that, the boxes of macaroni, yeah, just put the whole box in the freezer. And then once you get it out, just pour it in a jar such as this and then put some um, 
uh, bay leaves in it and you're good to go. I will say when I organized my kitchen pantry, oh, a couple of years ago, and I went to um, using half gallon size mason jars for that, I would just dump the macaroni in the jar and it was fine and it would be in there for almost a year. I didn't have any problems with it at all. Now that I'm more aware about thinking more about long term storage, I'm buying more. So whereas I might have bought maybe a couple boxes of macaroni or, or to fill up a jar like this. Well, now I might have six or seven boxes of that macaroni on my shelf. So I don't want to risk it possibly getting infested. So now I'm making sure that I'm freezing it and then getting it in jars. So Michelle, hey, Michelle, she said that she's glad she bought a ton of mason jars a while ago. And so she still got them. You take a 10 pound can of ketchup and you can put it into a case of half pint jars. OK, cool. So Dana says if the items are acid based, you can water bath can it. If it's not, if it's got protein in there, then you have to um, um, pressure can it. Uh, schools, how 94 wants to know how can she store cornmeal? You're going to store your cornmeal the same way you do your flour, your rice and that kind of thing. Take your cornmeal, put it in the freezer and then take it out. Put it in the freezer for a week, take it out, let it sit out for three or four days, come to room temperature if there's anything you know, in there that hatches, and then put it back in the freezer for another three or four days, and then put it in a glass jar. Glass is best, glass is best, glass is best. But as EJ just said, you gotta do what you gotta do. If you can't find glass, then use what you can. So you might be able to find some uh, plastic containers such as this at Walmart. I know they have them there that you can buy. They're less than five dollars. Um, they've got other items there, but glass is best. But I tell you what, some of the glass that I bought at Walmart and at Target, I saw the exact same thing in Hobby Lobby for two or three times the price. So don't buy it at Hobby Lobby unless you're desperate. I like white mouth jars too. Uh, Tonda just gave a comment and I don't know. Oh, she's talking about the ketchup. Okay. And then keep in mind that you can repurpose your jars. So for those of you that just jumped on, this was a jar of classical spaghetti sauce or pasta sauce. And I, once I use this, the sauce, I kept the jar and I'm using it to store beans in. And then I will put these in my pantry and kind of keep it in a cool, dark place. So Dana said she cans milk too. I don't have any of the science behind can and milk, Dana, but you know, you've been doing a homestead for a while. So these are things that are second nature to you. Yeah, like I said, um, Michelle was just saying, use those spaghetti jars to store rice and beans. Well, that's what this one was. It was a spaghetti jar. All right, let's see what else is on here. And the other thing about, um, So Kate Kate says, if you're storing nuts, beans, or flour in food grade buckets, should you leave it in the package or pour it into the bucket? We'll see if I can get that. Or, or pour it into the bucket. Uh, you want to take it, you want to pour it in the bucket. You don't want to leave it in the packaging. So in case you missed it, if you have like a big bag of flour or something like this, what I have figured out is that this food grade bucket that I got from Kroger, there was frosting in it. This 10 pound bag of rice will probably fill this up three quarters way. So since this is a food grade bucket, I could just pour the rice in this container, put the lid on it. And the lid looks like The lid looks like this. So this is a food grade lid and once it's on, it snaps on. It's really on there pretty tight. But if you can get the Mylar bags, I would encourage you to do that. If you can't get those, you can store it in the bucket, but not with the um, 
bag on it. Uh, oh, and then Dana's making a comment about nuts. Did I miss a question about nuts? But someone was maybe asked about nuts and, um, Oh, um, Janie says, don't store anything that has fat content like nuts um, or whole wheat with a moisture packet because, you know, the fat content can get rancid and can spoil. You can only store nuts for about a year. I like to put my nuts in the freezer until I'm ready to use them. So Pat says she used to can all the time, but now she freezes her tomatoes. And I've frozen quite a few, but I wanted to make some canned diced tomatoes so that I did that. So that's what I did yesterday. Somebody, Flower Child said she found mason jars at Kroger, three sets at 75% off. Oh my goodness, girl, I hope you jumped on that deal. Uh, Michelle wants to know, can you offer restaurant, can you order restaurant size cans from a company like Swanson? I believe you can and they'll deliver them to your door. So, yeah, I believe you can. And you can get some um, um, large cans at Costco and different places like that. I don't have a Costco membership. I'm trying to decide if it's worth my while to buy one. It's $60 just for the membership. And I think it's $60 a year. So I'm just trying to weigh that out that kind of thing. And then someone was saying that um, you can get canning jars at Ace Hardware. Dana, make a suggestion. Go ahead. We have a Costco here, but I haven't owned there a couple times. So Julia said she stores her nuts, yeast and flour in the freezer. Yeah, that just kind of helps to keep them to keep them fresh. So Dana, we're waiting on your suggestion. While we're waiting on that, I'm going to go ahead and answer another question. So I did that one. Um, one of my other um, comments was from Danny Mack, and she says she buys meat on sale and then she freezes it, but she takes it out of the package for, for oh, I already mentioned this one. She takes it out of the package for better freezing. Tina J says um, she savor seals her beans, flour, and sugar because it takes up less space that way. So yeah, that's a good option. And so that's what I've done with this rice. After I got it out of the freezer, I kind of savor sealed it. And then as I mentioned earlier, I also savor sealed some flour like this. So Dana says, pick up a pack or two of mason jars every time you shop and then that way you won't be without them. And yeah, that's a good suggestion. So now there were several questions about how to store sugar. And one of the questions was, how do you store brown sugar? And, you know, brown sugar is moist. And the thing with brown sugar is you're trying to keep it moist. You don't want it to dry out. So I've got my brown sugar in a couple of, con in a container like this. I was able to get two bags in this size container. And I have it in its regular packaging. And because, again, you're trying to keep keep it moist, but brown sugar, you probably can't keep it for more than a year. It's not a long term storage option food per se, whereas white sugar, you can keep that almost indefinitely. And one of my subscribers, and I can't remember the name now, I tried to, but she suggested that what her family does is they will put cinnamon sticks in their jars of sugar and it keeps the bugs out. Janie says she's a chef and you can order number 10 cans from Cisco. Uh, Rachel wanted to know, do I measure out my flour and sugar before vacuum sealing it? And yes, I do. This, this is flour. And as I mentioned earlier, one of my friends, Mary at Mary's Nest has a no need sandwich bread recipe that was really easy because, you know, I just learned how to bake bread and it turned out so nice. But, um, it takes six cups of flour. So I took a 10 pound bag of flour and I divided it up into six cups into these little brown lunch bags. And then I folded the lunch bag over into three parts and then put it in my food saver and stored it that way. And I did the same thing with some bags of sugar, but I put the sugar in two cup um little smaller lunch bags in two cup portions. Cause I mean, I don't typically use a lot of sugar 
for something unless I'm baking. So I've got a larger container where I've got like 10 pounds of sugar in it, but then I put some smaller size sugar bags like this one in a food grade container. Yeah, oh, that recipe that Ma Ma Mary shared about how to make that bread was so easy. You'll love it. And then someone suggested keeping um, molasses on hand um, to help make your own brown sugar. Yarn Prepper said she keeps brown sugar in the original bags in buckets and it lasts for several years. Okay, I found an article on the Provident Prepper that talked about sugar storage. I will link that in the description box below. Because there were several people that had questions about that. So you do want to store it in a food grade container. Kroger is always discounting their mason jars that they carry a lot of mason dinnerware and mason storage jars. So they have to keep the mason merchandise moving. OK. Uh, and then Gabby wanted to know, how do you store confectioner sugar? And she said it's been hard to find in her area. So she's been buying it in buck. And you're going to store your confectioner sugar the same way you do white sugar. Yes, you make brown sugar with a little bit of molasses. So, yeah, you want to keep it moist. So if you if you need to, you can make your own brown sugar. But I did that once. I use brown sugar when I'm making cream of wheat, which to my little granddaughters is porridge. Whenever they come visit, they want grandma to make porridge. And I use brown sugar. That's the secret. Brown sugar and butter. I was out of brown sugar one day, so I made my own with molasses. They could tell the difference. They said, Grandma, this is different. So I guess the concentration just wasn't the same. So now, Leslie, your, your question about food not being refrozen, you're talking about regular food. You're not talking about pantry staples like flour, that kind of thing. You can refreeze re flour. But here's the thing. If you freeze your flour, lay it out so that it thaws out, freeze it again and then lay it out so that it thaws out. And then you put it in your food storage container. If you don't use a lot of it, then package it in smaller containers so that you don't have to have a lot of it open at one time. You don't want to leave it in the freezer indefinitely, that kind of thing. Um, but keep it in mind, you don't want your sugar to get moist. So that's something there you want to consider, too. So Sandra says they can't find jars anywhere in their area. She's in central Kentucky. OK. So, yeah, you can refreeze flour, but let's say you thaw out a chicken and you decide you're not going to cook it and it's all completely thawed out. They don't want you to refreeze that. If there's still um, ice crystals in it, you know, you might be able to refreeze it if there's still ice crystals in it. But once it's thawed out, no. But flour, you can refreeze that. Oh, now Lee, Lee Ann had a question, but um, in her question, she talked about a victory pantry. And I like that term. And I first heard the term this victory pantry when I was watching uh, The Daily Connoisseur. This was after I had done my um, pantry video and she correlated it to the victory gardens that people used to plant during the war so they would plant gardens at their own home so that they could grow their own food stuff so that they could um, the more they grew at home and the less they had to shop for at the grocery store meant that there was more foods available for them to send overseas to the Allies. So they called them Victory Gardens. And so she said a Victory Pantry. And I thought, how nice. I like that term, a Victory Pantry, meaning that you are being prepared. You're planning ahead so that you can be victorious. Should there be a food shortage for whatever reason coming up? And then Mary at Mary's Nest talks about a four corner pantry, which I've never seen such a detailed video about a pantry before. I encourage you to check it out. Um, so I've got her channel linked below as well as Darcy. So you'll want to make sure you see that. But I like that idea of a victory pantry. So Dana said, remember to shop your local egg and farm stores for jars. So those are stores like tractor supply and feed supply, those kind of things. And then you guys are giving each other other ideas in the chat about different sweeteners that you can purchase. So I would suggest you reading the other comments that people are giving each other. 
cane uh, sugar and different things like that. I was surprised at how many sweeteners are really available in the store. But yeah, Jenny, you can't refreeze most foods, but you can refreeze flour, rice, that kind of stuff. Okay. All right. So I got a comment from Cheryl Ann and she said, thank you. They had some. And I was like, who had what? I couldn't remember what it was. And so she wrote back and said, Tractor Supply, I have mentioned that Tractor Supply had food grade containers and let me get this up here. It's kind of heavy. Oh. So this is a food grade container, five gallon bucket. It's got the little gamma seal lid. Ugh. You can get those at Tractor Supply for about $2.99, $3.99 at the most. They have a lid that comes with them. Now, of course, I would have gotten a red one, but the lids are like this, and they're about uh, $2.99 or $1.99. You can get the whole thing for less than $6. If you try to order a food-grade bucket like this on Amazon right now, and I checked the other day, they were like $16. I'm like, seriously? So Tractor Supply, which is what Dana was talking about, you know, at your kind of hardware kind of places, feed and farm stores, they have those kind of things. Dana said she likes the gamma seal lids for things that she has to get into often. And you can find them from anywhere from $7.99 to $15.99. At Tractor Supply, when I got my two, they were $7.99 and they only have three on the shelf. Whether or not they have any more right now, I don't know, but I'm gonna be checking it out because I wouldn't mind having a couple more of those. Whereas on Amazon, they're $15.99. And I've got some links below in the description box for most of this stuff that we've been looking at. But if you can like go to a store in your local area, you can probably get a better price for like your buckets and your lids and those kind of things. And the jars, I saw a box of jars for like $30. And I'm like, seriously? So yeah. Janie's also sharing that you can freeze eggs, scramble them up a little bit, and then put them in silicone muffin liners in a muffin tin, flash freeze them, then put them in a, a Ziploc bag. So, yeah. Oh, so Dee Dee Battle, she said, I've seen people freeze eggs in ice cube trays. Does anyone know about that? And um, Janie Fogel was sharing how you can do that. And, yes, you can freeze them. So, Janie says you... Uh, scramble them up a little bit, put them in a silicone muffin liner in a muffin tin, and then put them in Ziploc bags once you flash freeze them. And um, and if you just Google how do you freeze eggs, you can just, it is very similar to that. So yeah, you can freeze eggs. Okay. Well, this is a question from Beverly S. And she says, how long can rice, beans and pasta be stored in their bags before freezing and glass storage? And really, you can keep them on your shelf for several months without freezing. I mean, that's what most of us do. And that's what I was used to do. But now that we're looking at the possibility of mid to long term storage, we're thinking about getting those things out of the packaging and into some glass containers. Yeah, okay, yeah, Tractor Supply is a good place to buy things. They have camping items as well. So it's best if you're gonna thinking about mid to long storm storage, I would say get those things out of the boxes and start putting them you know, in um, glass containers or food savers and that kind of thing. So Bessie C says there's no Kroger in California, but you can find those uh, food grade buckets at Walmart in the deli for about a dollar. So that would be these buckets like this, you know, the ones that have frosting, um, potato salad, those kinds of things. The Walmart deli will sell those for a dollar. So that's still pretty good. And you get the lid with them, too. So consider checking out the deli at your Walmart, your Kroger, or your Publix, Food Lion, whatever it is that you have. Let 
There's more comments here about the freezers. I have several dozen in my freezer. The FDA says you can store them up to a year, but she slightly beats them up and puts them in a Ziploc. She doesn't like the muffin tin because they take longer to thaw and they don't cook right if you leave the egg whole. How do you get the pickle smell out of the buckets? I've not seen pickles in buckets. The pickles tend to be in jars. The pickles tend to be in jars and the smell comes out of that. Oh, but you're thinking about potato salad. Well, I'm going to tell you. Sorry. Let me grab it. When I washed this bucket out, and I had to scrape, 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 because this German chocolate frosting was so thick, but it smelled heavily. It still has a slight German chocolate smell to it. So what I plan to do is I'm going to uh, fill it up with some, um, like with a vinegar water solution, maybe vinegar water and baking soda, and see if I can get the odor out with that. If I can't, I'm just going to go ahead and use it because I figure, you know what, if I'm putting flour, sugar, or something like that in there, if it's got a little bit of smell of chocolate, I'm not going to mind a bit. Eileen's got some more uh, comments for you about how to freeze eggs. So make sure you're looking at that. Oh, Dana said at restaurants you get pickles in buckets. Oh, I didn't realize that. Okay. Well, then again, I would try. Um... Oh, Yarn Purpose says put the bucket in, put it out in the sun for two weeks. Dana says, wash it with Dawn and soda and then let it air out for a couple of days. The smell comes out. And that's what I plan to do. I'm just going to use some vinegar and some baking soda and Dawn and just kind of scrub it again. Let it soak for a little bit and then let it air out because it's going to start to get kind of chilly. So it may be a little difficult for me to be putting things out like that. But you guys have such great ideas. Thank you. Hey, Pat, it's good to have you with us. Jockey 23, nice to have you with us. You can catch the replay. Michelle's going to attract a supply today. She's going to buy a stock tank to make a raised planter garden. Okay, well, our growing season is at an end, so I won't be doing anything like that till next spring. Okay, um, we talked about that already. One of the comments that I got was from, um, oh, mail comes in plastic buckets also. So you can ask the, the, the restaurants for mail buckets as well. I got a comment from Angela and she said she vacuum seals all her dry goods in gallon size bags and she puts in a 500 cc oxygen absorber and then puts them in a large storage bin. And then after that, she puts a blanket over it to kind of help keep the uh, light out. So that makes sense. Okay, there's that. My name twin, Denise B, she says that she's giving you guys a tip and she says that what she does is she'll buy in ground beef or whatever meat she's going to make meatballs with and she'll make the meatballs ahead and then she puts them in the freezer and then if there's a power outage in her area, they're already cooked so she can get them out and, you know, just kind of jazz them up and do whatever she needs to do with them. Janie says some of the smaller buckets that you can get at the deli are a little bit easier. And yeah, I agree. This is a lot easier for me to handle than those big five gallon buckets because once they get full, they're hard to move. And you can also check Home Depot for food grade buckets. I was at Lowe's recently and they didn't have any food grade buckets. They had buckets, but not food grade. Whereas one of the people that I looked at, Jamarell, something or another, she said she got a bunch of food grade buckets at Lowe's. So maybe they're just out or my Lowe's just doesn't have any. And then Sarah said that she likes the idea of the, in one of my videos, it was my, um, Prepper pantry, grocery haul, building a three month food supply. She said she liked the idea of whole milk, dried whole milk and dried whole eggs, but wanted to know where she can buy them. Well, I've got a link below. You can buy them on Amazon. But this is what I found out. This particular um, dried whole milk powder. And like I said, I do have a link on Amazon below that you can get that. It's called Hoosier Hill Farm. That's right here in the town where I live. I thought I could have drove over there and picked some up. I mean, I don't know if they let you buy things like that, but 
I looked at where they're they're located and I thought, well, they must be just around the corner. So there's that one. And then she was asking about the whole dried eggs. And I got these online also. So these are the Judy's gluten-free whole dried eggs. And um, they're supposed to make up really nicely when you cook them. I'm going to try a couple recipes with some of this with some of this dried things and see how you guys like it. So Sandra said she ordered some from Judy's from another video. Oh, great. You know, guys, I do have an Amazon store with links um, in the description box. So if you're so inclined, consider, you know, using my link. If not, it's OK. Like I said, I didn't want to spend that hundred and thirty five dollars, you know, to order that stupid ball fresh tech canner. Did I pay for that? Yes, I did. Yeah, and Dana at Biddy Boo's Homestead, she is so full of good suggestions, but she's been homesteading for a while, so she knows her way around the block. Okay, so I gave that question. Oh, so now Wanella had a question. She wanted to know, why don't I put the expiration of the ingredients instead of writing the date you put the ingredients in the jar? Well, what I do is for the things that are... Um, purchased things, I will put the best buy date on that. So for example, on this one here, you know, I'll find the best buy date and then I'll mark it with a uh, marker or something like that. But when I am making something like, for example, when I made these diced tomatoes, I put on here diced tomatoes and then I put the date on here that I put them in the jar because I know that once they're canned, they're good for about 18 months in the jar. And I don't want to have to try to do that math every time. So I could just put the date that I put them in there. Then I'll know um, that, um, you know, if it's been a year, that's oh, OK. I got to get ready to get this used up. And then here's one of my canning jars that I put some of my herbs in. And it was um, peppermint and I just, you know, dried them and I put them. Oh, OK, there was a question from. Elijah about suggestions for altern alternative cooking methods. Ooh, that's a toughie. Okay. So here's the thing. There are, well, if you have a power outage and you have to have an alternative cooking method, what are you going to do? Well, if you've got a grill, like a gas grill or a barbecue grill that you have to put charcoal briquettes in, you can use that on your patio or something like that. You cannot use those charcoal briquettes or uh, propane gas tanks in the house. You can only use them outside. You try that kind of stuff in the house, you could end up killing yourself and your whole family. So you can only do that outside. So that's an alternative option would be to have matches in some wood and things like that, or you know your charcoal briquettes or an extra tank of propane gas. You could use your grills out on your patio. We have ice storms in our area. And there was one year we had, well, the blizzard of 78, we were all stuck in our house for about two weeks because, I mean, we literally had a blizzard with walls of snow that was like almost eight feet tall. I remember coming home from work one day. They had finally got the streets opened up enough that people could start to move about. And I worked at a hospital, so I'm a nurse and I worked at a hospital, so I needed to get to work because hospitals don't shut down. I don't care what's going on. Hospitals still open. And I was coming down the street and I was going to try to go around this 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 road crew. Why I was going to do that, I don't know. And when I got around, I was like, oh, my God, there must have been a 10 foot mountain of snow where they had been clearing the street. And it was I was just going to really get into a mess. But but uh, people just couldn't get out and you were pretty much locked into whatever you had in your home. And at this particular time, the fire department was taking milk, bread, things like that out to various communities to kind of help tide people over. And then, of course, you checked on your elderly neighbors. A few years back, well, more than a few years, because my dad's been gone now about eight years, when we had an ice storm, and it was so pretty. The trees are just completely encased in ice. They just look like a picture. They're beautiful. But when those tree branches fall and they knock down power lines, we had power outages in our city for almost two weeks. Luckily, in the area that I lived in, we didn't have a power outage. Now, my folks lived just a few blocks over in another addition. They had a power outage. And they had to come over and stay with us for a little bit. And then our power went out. So my husband went and got a generator from one of his brothers and hooked the freezer and, you know, a few things up. So, you know, we were okay. 
So you have to think about what kind of options do you need to be prepared for. And so we had to use our grill for a couple of days to cook with once our power went out. As long as we had power, I was just using my electric oven. Um, other things that I've seen, I've not done this myself, but I've kind of been look, doing a little bit of research on it. You can buy these like cast iron skillets, cast iron pots. Think about when you were a Girl Scout or if you were a Boy Scout or if you helped with your kids on Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts on little camping trips. And they set up these like little, like a little saw horse kind of thing, only it's cast iron and you make a little fire and you can put the pot over the fire to cook with. Or cowboy pictures, you know, you look back at some of the old cowboy pictures and you see them cooking over an open fire. So you can cook alternatively over an open fire should you need to. And then Dana was just saying, make sure that you have an alternate source of heat. So when my husband hooked up the generator, he did hook it up so that we could get the furnace running, the freezer and the refrigerator and like one lamp in the living room and but that was good for us and our power was only out for about three days so the other people in town whose power was out they had to move into a hotel and that kind of thing until things settled down so yeah Dana you're right make sure you have an alternative way to heat your home other than electric we do have a fireplace which really doesn't throw off much heat um, but we do have that um, and you want to have extra blankets and maybe extra coats and things like that. Because I have to tell you, when our power went out, and we have electric heat, so when our power went out, and I could just feel the chill coming into the house. And I had my folks here, you know, and they were elderly at that time. And I remember them sitting in the chairs here in this room, and I went upstairs and got a bunch of blankets, and I brought the blankets down, and I was like putting blankets around them, you know, tucking them in to kind of keep them warm. And um, my mom had a bird that she loved and I brought the bird over here and put it in the living room. But I started worrying, is the bird going to freeze to death? That kind of thing. But I knew my husband was sorted out and he did. So he got the generator and we were fine. Dana asked, do I keep a bug out bag or was it Elijah or no, Janie? And no, I don't. I don't keep a bug out bag. And Janie, let me just kind of share this. I know there are a whole group of people that believe that there's going to be like really bad stuff coming like in November. And by nature, I believe in the goodness of mankind. I believe that basically people are good at heart and that you will help your neighbor as needed. That's what I believe. And, you know, until you show me something different, I'm going to think you're a nice person. And then as far as a bug out bag, you know, and put your bug out bag. It's like a little bag that you have prepared with like emergency supplies and, you know, information about yourself and your family, that kind of thing. I don't have that. I probably should. But if but I'm like, where am I going to go? I live in a city. I don't live like like out on a homestead where you do. You've got lots of room all around. I live in the city. I got neighbors all around me on both sides, you know, so it's like if I'm going to bug out, I'm going to bug out to where. Now, it does make sense, though, to have certain information prepared ahead. So in case you do have to evacuate your home, you've got that. I know my daughter lived when they moved to Florida. No, to, to, to New Orleans. The first thing that her friends there said was you've got to prepare a go kit, a, a go bag. And this kind of thing. And they told them what they needed to do to keep it. Because, you know, in New Orleans, they have, her, they have hurricanes and floods and that kind of thing. And they got to be prepared. Have your route ready and all of that. I've not done that. I probably should. But I'm not. I, I've not done that. Elijah says, what is SHTF? Okay, I'm not going to say that. But SHTF is if the Stuff hits the fan. And there's a lot of people that believe that um, after the November election, regardless of who wins, that there's going to be civil disobedience and a lot of really bad stuff. I, I don't want to believe that. I, I don't think that's who we are as a people. Um, that's not how I think as a person. So I'm believing that, you know, there's going to be food shortages because of the different natural disasters that's been happening in 
the country. So let's, and the world. We are linked to a global food supply. And I know I've got a few Australian friends there on. And one of the things that I've heard is there's a shortage of rice in Australia because there's been a problem with the Australian food crop. So they're not exporting as much, I guess, because they need to keep it for their own people. Um, there's been a problem with the Iowa corn crop, you know, when they had that big storm and it smashed a bunch of silos, a lot of grain silos filled with corn smashed, you know, now that stuff has been irretrievably damaged. They're going to have to rebuild all that stuff, but it's going to take time. So the corn and many of the foods that we're buying in cans in the stores today is from last year's food harvest. Well, the food harvest from this year is not going to be quite as robust because of some of the natural disasters. You know, we've had fires and we've had floods and we've had whatever. So those are some things to think about. Japan is also having a problem with ice, with rice. You know, it's it's been so there's a rice shortage there. So when I go shopping, if I see rice in the store, I pick some up. When we had the shutdown in March, you couldn't find rice on the shelf for a while there. And we have a large Asian community in our city. And um, so they had purchased a lot of the rice before people knew there was going to be a shortage. And I'm thinking, well, did family members or someone in other places tell them, you know what, we're having a problem with rice here. You might need to pick up rice where you are because that's what we do. Like I'm telling you guys, there's a problem with black eyed peas. You might want to pick up some black eyed peas. So they're listening to those comments and they're picking up stuff, too. So those are just some things to think about. So I'm just saying whatever you can't find now, when you do find it, buy it. When the shutdown happened in March and um, you could go out to grocery shop and things were in short supply, but now things are back on the shelves, whatever you can find then that your family typically uses, buy it. You want to be strategic and you want to prepare. Now, let me just give my quick spiel here about the difference between preparing and hoarding. First of all, Hoarding is you just buy, 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 buy. You have no plan. You have no strategy and you have no intention of using it. You're just buying stuff just to buy stuff, just to have it in your closet. When you are preparing, you're preparing a three to four month food supply for a possible emergency. We've had those emergencies recently. So we know that those emergencies are possible. So you're going to store up that three to four month food supply for your family, but you're going to only buy what you use. And you're going to use what you buy. You're going to buy what you need and leave the others for other people. So when I saw some canning supplies on the shelf at Target, I bought two boxes and I left the other boxes for someone else. Now, I will show you this. So I have this food saver here and I had bought one. And then these are the little bags that goes along with it. And um, it's got like a little vacuum sealer thing and it sucks all the air out of stuff. I bought one of these and I loved it. I didn't keep one of those out to share with you. Sorry about that. And I don't want to leave the screen, but I really like the way it works. So I went and bought another one just in case this one, the one that I use breaks. I wanted to have another one. The bags are kind of pricey, but I like the way it works. And then also I'm coming up on 35,000 subscribers. Now it's going to take me a minute to get there, but I bought one of these and a set of bags to use as a giveaway, as a prize for when I hit my 35,000 subscribers. I thought that'd be a pretty good gift, you know, to, to give away. So I'm doing that. Let's see. What are some of the other comments? Jamie says she wants to live in faith and not fear. Martiz is from uh, Puerto Rico. And Elijah says it's okay to be concerned, but don't let fear rule your heart. And, and that's true. You want to live in faith and not fear. But the other thing is this. We also want to, we also want to work with common sense. So when you're shopping and you go to the grocery store every week for five, six or seven weeks, and you can't find a five pound bag of cornmeal on the shelf. All you can find is those little two pound boxes of cornmeal. There's a problem with cornmeal. There's a problem with the distribution of the cornmeal. Now, common sense tells you if 
a significant portion of the corn crop is wiped out. That's going to affect the supply of corn for next year. So, and you know, I don't want to be Cassandra, you know, Cassandra from Greek mythology, and she would tell people stuff that was going to happen, and, but they wouldn't believe her or listen to her. And I don't want to be an alarmist, but I just want you to use your common sense. So if typically when you go to the store and you buy black eyed peas and now you can't find them on the shelf, there could be a problem. So that's where I am on that. So it's not like I, I don't like to to say, oh, you know, there's going to have all this unrest and all that. I, I, I'm not that person. But who I am is that as homemakers, I want to have the food insurance that I need for my family. I have auto insurance. I have homeowners insurance. I even have insurance on this stupid phone that I hate. So why wouldn't I have the food insurance that I need for my family? Even though I have to kind of sneak and buy stuff sometimes, because like I said, my husband thinks I've lost my mind. So that's what you want to do. And I understand that, you know, people don't want to be worried and some people are, but you know what? And I don't want to get teary, so let me not do that. But we live like in Indiana, we are in the heart of the breadbasket. We grow hogs, we grow corn, we grow soy, almost any food product, we grow it right here in Indiana. So we're in the heart of the breadbasket. I am convinced that there is enough food in this country for every person in this country. But only if you plan ahead. If they say, you know what, because of the rising in COVID cases, we're going to shut the country down again. We're going to shut everything down starting today is what, Saturday? So as Monday at 8 o'clock, we're shutting it down. Everybody's going to rush out like crazy and try to buy and get prepared. Then there's going to be chaos and there's not enough supplies. But if you prepare your pantry like you would eat an elephant, one bite at a time, you'll be okay. So, just like you'd eat an elephant, you want to prepare your prepper pantry. Start preparing Today, if you've not started, little by little, start gathering in the things that your family needs and um, buy what you use and use what you buy. So then that way, let's say you've got this four month supply of stuff and you end up. There's no shortage, as you know, we think, well, you know, winter is coming, so you still need to prepare for that. Our grandparents always prepared for things. My grandma was always canning and putting up food and stuff like that. That's how I learned to make jams and jellies from watching her, that kind of thing. So, so those are things that we want to do. So those are things to think about. Oh, so Desert Jesus, Diva says she's from Indy. Hey, I'm in Fort Wayne. Um, Well, you know, I'm not going to go into all that African queen. I think everyone, every person, every country, everyone has some things that, you know, they probably wish they hadn't done. So, you know, we're not going to do that. But we do want to make sure, though, that we are preparing. OK, so let's see what else. So um, Mark, Marky Mark says, if a food shortage comes, food will cost more. And I've noticed that the meats particularly cost more. We've got, like I said, pork packing plants here in Indiana that they've closed down because of COVID. So if those and then they reopened them. But workers were getting ill. So, you know, they can't keep up the production. If meat packing plants are closing down in Indiana, that's going to affect you in Hawaii. It's going to affect you in Carolina. It's going to affect you somewhere else. So if you just look at the news and try to be objective and think about what's what, you know, you just have to prepare is all I can say. So 
So Dana said, if stores, if trucks can't get to the store, um, then um, when we had our ice storm and our blizzard, you know, that was a disruption in the food distribution because people couldn't travel, trucks couldn't travel, things like that. You know, a lot of merchandise is moved in by trucking and that kind of thing. So if you think about the natural disasters in your area, that's going to affect your distribution. You think about some of the other major things that can happen. So just just prepare for what you can do, because you can only do what you can do. Because all you can do is what you can do. Do the best you can and pray to God uh, to help manage the rest. So Desert Diva says sometimes she thinks the prepping is helping her to relieve her anxiety. And yes, it's been helpful for me too, because when I'm focused on making sure that I've got the necessary food supply for my family, then I realize that should I become ill with COVID or whatever, like I have a heart condition, so should I become ill with something related to that? I've got the things here in the house that my husband and my two sisters can use if necessary. If I'm down sick and he needs to be able to sort it out, he'll be able to do that as well as the two sisters that I'm also somewhat responsible for. So, so there's that. Uh, so I think those were all the questions that I had. We went through a lot of questions that I had on the cards and the comments. And then we also had lots of questions here. So Jenny said she thinks prepping is a healthy, op healthy option. And not only is she helping herself, but she's also thinking about her children and her grandchildren. So, yes. Um, and then some people have talked about trying to be able to get um, um, refrigerators and freezers. We did buy a small overflow freezer because my husband does a lot of fishing and he had this little small chest freezer that he would put all his fish in. Well, then I started freezing vegetables and things like that and putting stuff in his freezer. And then sometimes he'd have this grody looking fishy ice little bucket kind of things in there. So we got a small overflow freezer that I need to get organized because I've been freezing some of my tomatoes and different things like that, but they were very hard to come by. We were able to get a small chest freezer for less than $200 at Lowe's, but it took us a couple weeks to get it. And the guy said, these small chest freezers, you can get in within two weeks to a month. If you're looking for an upright freezer, they said you can't get anything like that before the first of the year. So hopefully our upright freezer will stay in good shape, even though it looks kind of odd right now. I looked at it and I was cleaning it out. I was like, what is that? But, you know, so there's that to think about. Um, and new refrigerators are even a problem, too. So um, you can find some of those in the store, but you might have to wait a little bit, that kind of thing. So I think. Um, Uh, I think I've probably answered most of the um, things here. Um, and um, if you have any other questions, uh, let me know. And I'll try to get them answered. And like I said, I am... Oh, she had a question about how many cans of meat. That's a good question. I had something. How many cans of meat to store? So let me share a couple of things real quick. One of them, uh, Desert Diva found a chest freezer at a garage sale. Wow. That was really a good deal. Okay, so I've done a video on how to do an inventory of my pantry, my fridge, and my freezer. Um, and there, there are um, several pieces comes with it. So I've got like an inventory list for the fridge. And then one, there's a meal planner worksheet that comes with it. As well as, you know, I've started doing one for the extended pantry. So if you want those, just send me an email and I'll send those out to you. 
But I also found this. And it is a sample three month food storage supply list. And if you want that, you know, send me an email and I'll send this out. To, well, I'll send them all out to you if you if you want them. I'll send all six of them out to you. But it tells you what you need to have for whatever. So a sample three month food store supply. So emergency drinking water, you want a two week supply. And it's got on here, it's got like the total that you've got. And then uh, how much you have, how much you need, you know, like where is it located, that kind of thing. And so for like flour, it says you need to have 15 pounds of white flour per person. Or um, cornmeal, one pound of, of that per person. And then for soups and meals and things like that, for mac and cheese, you should have two boxes of mac and cheese per person. Super chili, six cans per person. Now let me see, where, where's the meats on here? For chicken or turkey, you should have 6 to 12 ounces. Well, that doesn't make sense. Oh, 6 or more 12-ounce portions per person. Beef, ham, or pork, 6 or more 12-ounce portions per person for like a two-week supply. And then you would triple that trying to go up to your three-month supply. Dry beans or lentils, five pounds for short, short term supply. For long term supply, you want to have 10 pounds. So I can send this out if you guys want it. I, I found it on another website uh, when I was doing some research, but it's kind of interesting. So and it's free to copy for personal or church use. And it's prepared by the Latter Day Saints um, of Jesus Christ, I believe. And what I discovered is that. The Mormon Church and the, and I think the Latter Day Saints is under the auspices of the Mormon Church. I could be wrong, so I probably shouldn't say that. But anyway, under the Latter Day Saints, they have a whole prepping philosophy that goes along with their religion, and they encourage their families to prepare for long-term food storage for whatever emergencies might have. One of the people that I like is Jordan Page at Fun Cheaper Free. She's got like eight kids just had a set of twins about six months ago and her and her family live in Utah and they believe in preparing. And so with eight kids, you got to prepare a lot of stuff, but they were showing a day where the family was going through a preparing drill. And then each of the kids had like a little backpack with things in it that they needed for like a three day food, clothing supply, that kind of thing. So I'll link Jordan's channel below too, because she's, she's really quite interesting. But if you want these, I think, you know, but yes, Mormon churches are high on pre preparing. Yeah, this is the Church of the Jesus Christ of the Latter-day Saints. Yeah, that's what it is. That's what it is. Yeah, they have stores and things like that. And they're willing to share this information because they want all people to be prepared. And September is National Preparedness Month, which is why you've seen so many options to Take a look at on YouTube this month because everybody's jumping in. Someone asked if I have an Instagram to follow and I do. It's called, you know, at this and that with Denise on Instagram. So, yeah, my Instagram handle is in the description box as well. I've also got a Facebook group that's called for traditional homemakers that if you want to join, the link is in the description box as well. I haven't. We're going to try to be more active in the Facebook group, talking about how we can cook some of the things that we're using or that we're saving, that kind of thing. So, yeah. So, listen, guys, we've been on much longer than I thought, but I'm going to need to um, get going, get over to the uh, pick up my cousin so we can get to the hospital. So I'm going to need to get ready to go. But thank you guys for joining me. And I will go through. Hey, Marky Mark says he got his gamma lids at Tractor Supply. So good. Hope you guys don't buy them all out before I need to get some more. Hmm. Anyway, so here's my question for you, especially if you're here on the replay. What are 
some of the questions that you still need answered in regards to preparing for your three month food supply or where are you in your pantry journey. So where are you with that? And um, I will link my playlist for my prepping journey with an I card above and in the description box below and um, encourage you to check that out as well. And then of course, I've got links in the description box for a lot of the different things that we've talked about today. And just so you know, I've raised three children and I have managed a home for more than 45 years. So I prepared a lot of meals, you know, bought a lot of groceries. So I appreciate you joining me. So if you want to learn more about making and keeping at home, hit the subscribe button. I can teach you to be a traditional homemaker in an untraditional world. And being a traditional homemaker includes preparing in, having the food insurance you need for your family. And just so you know, like I said, I've got that link below that has my prepper pantry playlist. And be sure and check that out. So, good day guys. People are saying they're, they're glad that I went live. I was kind of hesitant about it. Cause you know, sometimes you can get weird people jump on lives, but we've been really blessed today. You know, God has been good to us. You know, we've not had any trolls or anything like that. And uh, we were able to share the information we need. So we'll have another um, prepping live Q&A uh, in a couple of weeks. But thank you guys for joining me today. So I'll check you guys out soon. And please continue to pray because, you know, my cousin's not doing well. So see you guys later.